Hi, I'm Paige or Novice Cosplay, and in this video, I'm going to walk you through my entire process of how I made my Aelita cosplay from Code Lyoko. So if you love Code Lyoko as much as I do, I really hope this video will help you out with your own Aelita costume. As always, links to the materials that I used, as well as other helpful resources, will be linked down below. So with that out of the way, let's get started. Let's start with the pink top. For the pattern, I modified McCall's M7723. And drafted custom shaped trim, which you can learn more about in my seamless custom trim video. First, sew the side seams and shoulder seams. Also, sew the side seam on your sleeves. Press them all open. Next, attach your sleeves. Okay, that's the easy part. Now for the trim attachment. Mark your seam allowance on your trim and top with chalk or disappearing ink. Line up the trim, matching the marked seam allowance as shown. Then, pin that down to keep it in place. Now, sew along your marked seam allowance, stopping exactly at the point. Then, cut a slit at the corner, going as close to the seam allowance as possible. This allows you to twist your trim to the other direction. So, twist it, line it up, and pin it in place. Then, starting at the exact point you marked, start sewing. Only sew a little so you can check that it looks nice and redo it if it has a fold. Here's what it should look like when you're done. Next, pin the rest of the trim down and sew it on normally. I did the rest of the trim a bit weirdly because I didn't trust my patterning skills, so I cut extra fabric and seam allowance and lined up the seam on the fly. Then pin those all onto the shirt and stitch them down. And repeat all of these steps on your lining fabric. Now we move on to attaching the lining. Flip both pieces wrong side out and line up the two shirts. Pin around all of the edges. Then just sew the two together. Now trim the bulk fabric at the two points so that when you flip your shirt right sides out, they will be nice and crisp and pointy. Then, flip the top right side out through the sleeve holes. Next, attach the lining and fabric at the sleeve openings, simply stitching them together. Sew the trim on the side seam and press that open. Pin it to your sleeve edge and sew around. Flip your top to the lining side and pin your sleeve trim down to seal the raw edges. You can stitch in the ditch with your machine or opt for a hand sewn whip stitch like I did. Then all that's left is figuring out where you want your closures. I use snaps, but Velcro would also work. Attach your closures and your top is done. Now for the skirt. I flat drafted my skirt from scratch, but there are many wrap skirt patterns readily available, and I linked one below too. For the skirt, I attached the trim before sewing the pieces together. You'll follow the same steps as the pink top. Mark your seam allowance on the trim and the fabric. Line up one edge and pin and sew. Make a slit at the corner as close to the seam allowance as possible, then twist your trim and pin it to the other side and sew. Redo if necessary and you're done. 
Finish pinning and sewing down the rest of the trim. And take this opportunity to press your seam allowance towards the trim. Once all of the trim is attached, sew the skirt together at the side seams and press those sides open too. Repeat this on your lining, then line up the fabric and lining with wrong sides facing out. Pin around all of the edges and sew. Now trim the bulk fabric at the two points so that when you flip your shirt right sides out, they will be nice and crisp and pointy. Don't sew the top edge yet because first we need to understitch. Iron or pin the seam allowance into the lining direction, then sew those together. You'll only see these stitches on the lining side if done correctly, like so. Give it a press one more time, then flip it inside out. Pin and sew the top edge, but leave a 3 inch opening in the middle back so you can flip it right side out again. Use a ladder stitch to close up the opening, then add the closures of your choice. I use snaps. Then your skirt is done. The pants are super easy. I used New Look 6581 and followed the instructions to a T. First, line up and pin the inner leg seam for both legs and sew together. If you're using a serger like me, only the outermost thread will show, so I just used one small spool of sage green thread for everything. Next, pin together the crotch or inseam and sew. Now maneuver your pant legs so the outer leg seams line up, and pin and sew those together. Serge or stitch around the waistband. Next, fold over and pin one and a half inches. Use a sewing gauge or ruler, and try to be as exact as you can. Move over to your sewing machine and straight stitch about 1 4th inch from the edge. This should be just above your serged stitches. Leave a small 1 inch opening at the center back. String 1 inch waistband elastic through the small opening. Try on your pants to determine how much elastic you need then attach the two ends together, sewing a box shape. Then put it into the waistband and stitch that opening you left closed. To prevent the elastic from twisting, stitch in the ditch at all four seam locations on the waistband. I repeated all of these steps on the bottom pant leg edges. I searched the edge, folded over one inch of fabric and pinned, strung through and measured three quarters inch elastic, attached the elastic, sealed it in, and stitched in the ditch at the two seams. And there you have it, super easy comfy pants. Now to add the pink straps to the pants. You will need seven straps total. Compare your legs to the reference image to get the placement of each strap just right and be sure to mark where you want each strap to sit. Measure around your leg at each marked point, then cut out your fabric and lining for the straps. I made mine all one and a half inches wide. Next, pin and sew the sides together, leaving the sides open to turn them right side out. For invisible stitches, fold the ends in, sealing the raw edges, and ladder stitch the openings closed. Then take the two finished ends and ladder stitch those together too. This creates a perfect loop with no visible seams. Finally, you take the finished loop and carefully pin or baste it to your pants, then hand stitch those on so they don't shift around. And just like that, all the straps are complete. 
Now onto the green top. I use pattern M7983 and just remove the sleeves and crotch. Follow its instructions, starting with pinning together and sewing the shoulder seams. Next, sew the neckband and armband into a loop. Fold the turtleneck band in half and pin it to the collar, stretching to match the notches. You will need to stretch the turtleneck as you sew in some areas to keep the notches matched. Next, pin and serge the side seams. Now we need to make a tank top instead of having sleeves. With right sides together, pin, then serge a small strip of fabric around the armholes. Fold the strip to the inside and straight stitch around the armhole, about 5 8 inch away from the edge. To finish the top, serge the bottom edge, then fold and pin it to form a hem. Again, straight stitch 5 8 inch away from the edge so that the arm and bottom hems are uniform. And that concludes the green turtleneck top. The earring is really easy to do. Take one flat head pin and string a red bead and silver bead cap through it. Next, take two pliers and bend the metal pin into a 90 degree angle and then cut it short. Then, twist the remaining metal into a loop. Remember that links to all of these materials are in the description below. That way you can just slip it on to a metal hoop earring and you're done. Next up, the armbands. To create the loose, poofy effect, I used a trapezoid shape for the pattern and made the length wider than my wrist and arm. The pattern is available for free and is linked below. I also cut out two rectangles of pink fabric. Start by taking your wrist piece and iron one side of the seam allowance. Next, take some thin elastic cord and zigzag stitch over it, attaching it close to the wrist edge. Then, gather the elastic to match your wrist circumference. Using elastic will ensure it does not lose its stretch. Next, we will attach the wristband in a similar way as a non-stretch waistband. This will later allow your hand to fit through the opening. Mark your seam allowance on your green fabric. Line up the ironed edge of the pink fabric with the marked seam allowance. This may look weird now, but it'll make sense later. On the other side, your pink fabric will not line up with the green fabric and will go over the edge. Pin and secure the rest of the pink fabric to the green fabric, making sure right sides are facing together. Now sew the fabric together but stop stitching when you get to the pin that lines up with the seam allowance on the green fabric. Before moving on, we will work on the upper arm side. Once again, attach elastic cord with a zigzag stitch, then gather. Now pin the pink fabric to the green fabric, right sides facing together, and line them up normally. Then sew, making sure the elastic cord won't be visible. Then fold your entire armband in half, right sides facing in, and pin the sides together. Sew along the edge, but not all the way up to the wrist area. And on the pink upper armband area, leave a small opening for elastic to go through later. Now over on the pink wristband, fold it in half, wrong sides facing out, and pin. Sew along the bottom and side edges.
trim the bulk fabric, then when you flip it right sides out, you'll have a neat rectangle. Next I folded over the pink armband encasing all the raw edges and whip stitched it all down. Make sure not to go through the front layer of fabric so that your stitches don't show. Then measure elastic around your arm to see how much you need and string that through the opening. Sew the elastic together, then close up the opening with a ladder stitch. Moving back over to the wristband, whip stitch that all down as well. Put the excess green fabric seam allowance inside of the pink fabric as you sew. And when you get to the end, ladder stitch the side and close. So it's almost done now. Just add a closure of your choice. I opted for a snap and hand stitch that on. And just like that, the armband is complete. Now for the shoes or the shoe covers. First, you'll need a base shoe. I recommend an ankle boot. Wrap your shoe in plastic wrap and tape, then trace on the pattern. Test out the pattern with a fabric mock-up, making any adjustments needed. Next, we'll need to make a lot of straps to create the faux bandage wrap shoe effect. I cut out strips of fabric that were one and a half inches wide. You'll need a lot of strips. Once everything's cut out, sew the two shoe sides together. On the bottom sole, fold over the hem allowance and stitch it down. I also added iron-on interfacing for extra stability. Next, baste the sole to the top part of the shoe. This way, you can put it over your boot and start draping the straps on. Experiment with different layouts and placements, and then pin the straps down once you're happy with how they look. Then, remove the fabric, remove the basted seam on the sole so you can attach the straps directly to the shoe, stitching them together in the seam allowance on the edge. Trim away the excess fabric on the straps. Next, with right sides facing together, pin the sole and the top fabric together and sew. Flip that right side out and hooray! It's starting to look like a bandage wrap shoe. Once you repeat that with the lining, with wrong sides facing out, pin the lining and outer fabrics together. Sew them together along the sides and the top. I also recommend under stitching the top edge for a crisper edge. Flip it right side out and pin the bottom edges of the lining and outer fabric together, stitching it closed by hand. Then add snaps or a closure of your choice in the back of the shoe. And then all that's left is the optional step of adding a stick-on rubber shoe sole protector. I recommend these because without them, the fabric base of the boot covers aren't very sturdy and they can start to tear after use. Plus, they provide way more grip when walking. I'll include a link to those and all my other materials down below. But after sticking those on, the shoes are completed. I think they came out really cute. And that completes my Aelita costume. Let's see how it turned out.
Overall, this was a super fun and relatively simple outfit to make. So if you're a beginner or on the fence, I say go for it because if you ever run into any issues, you can just reach out to me on Instagram or Twitter and I will be happy to help you. Thank you so much for watching and I really hope it helps.